Hi, you guys. Lindsay here. Welcome back to my channel, Inside the Hem. Yep, believe it or not, there's been another pattern release by the big four. Um, this time it is Simplicity's Fall Patterns. So I am going to jump in, see what they have for us. Um, they literally just came out with their late summer, early fall collection. I mean, was that like a month ago, I feel like? And now we have their like official fall collection. So I'm excited to see what they have. All right, all of these that I skipped were like kids clothes and costumes and stuff. This is a men's shirt. So if you wanna sew a gift for the man in your life, check that guy out. Um, but jumping into women's wear, the first one we have is this kind of like sweatshirt type uh, pattern. Oh, it's one of their pattern hacking patterns. So it looks like you have a base pattern that, wow, look at the versatility here. You guys have heard me kind of gripe um, in the past about how the um, pattern hacking options were like sort of basic and it's like, okay, obviously I know I can crop this or, you know, lengthen it or, you know, do easy, basic, simple things, but look how different and varied all of these options are. These look like four different shirts, which is exactly what the pattern hacking pattern should be. This is great. This is actually something that I would buy to see how you can convert, you know, one base pattern into these four. Although you can probably look and see it's not rocket science, but still they are very, very different, which is great. All right, let's take a closer look at the line drawings. So you have your base pattern, which is a, it looks just like a drop shoulder um, bodice, tunic length. Um, it has a sleeve, a longer sleeve with a little um, slit in it. And then these ruffles, which obviously can be left on or removed, not a problem. Um, your second option has kind of like a tie on the sleeve, which is adorable. And then this like ruffle half placket, that's really cute. Here is the base pattern without any sleeves. It looks to be shorter and they teach you how to make this little like tie, which I'm thinking is sewn in. Yeah, sewn into the side seams and you just wrap it around. That's adorable. And then you've got this cropped version with a gathered elasticized sleeve, which is cute. And then I don't know if this is applique or I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Um, let's see if they give us any laced front option, which must be option four. Uh, grommet trim. Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure if it's like, where did the line drawings go? If it's like grommet, I think what it is, which is actually really cute, is I think you put like a whole bunch of grommets on here and then you lace like um, uh, twill tape or some ribbon or something through the grommets. I think that's stinking cute. I am loving this. We still only get like our one set of pictures, which is annoying, but um, yeah, I think this is great. I think they did a really good job. Really good job with this one. Very excited about that. Um, okay, let's see what else we've got. Here we've got another pattern hacking pattern. Let's see how this one goes. So we've got our base pattern, which is, it looks like a basic shift dress, I think knit. Again, the drop shoulder, long sleeve, and then they're telling us we can, you know, cut off the sleeve to different lengths, cut off the skirt to different lengths, obviously. We've got this little belt, um, and then we've got an elasticized version with, it looks like the ties are fed through, and then they come out on each side seam. Here's one with kind of like a flutter sleeve, and then here's one with um, origami elbow sleeve and sheer band is what it says. Here are the line drawings. This is a little less inspirational, 
you know, they kind of, they don't look the same, but I don't know. Maybe it's just because it's kind of like a blah base pattern to me. Shift dresses, as y'all know, are not typically my most favorite thing to make. Um, I wonder, are they suggesting fabrics are batik, chalet, chambray, cotton types, linen types, micro suede, and shirtings? So this is woven. This is not knit. Uh, that kind of makes me like it less. I mean, you could definitely make it out of a stable knit. See, that's just not super flattering to me, I think, just in general. So, but there you have it. Cute styling, though, I think. All right, we've got our Mimi G patterns. Let's see, we've got here some pants. Oh. Uh, oh, a top and wide leg pants. Okay, Mimi, let's see. So we've got some, oops, let me see the rest. Okay, there we go. We've got some pants that are fitted. It looks like they have a fly front and a waistband with a button. Um, and then all of this button detail down the front. And then your top looks to be like just an asymmetrical with some pleating, some asymmetrical like uh, color blocking, turtleneck. This could be cool. I don't know about these pants. Um, they might just not be my style. Um, stretch knits only, obviously. And then in the pants, ponty. Stretch robins with 25% stretch. Yeah, that makes sense. Here are our line drawings where you can see them better. And these could be cool. I think maybe I just wouldn't make them as close fitting. Um, she wears her clothes very close fitting. I think almost always her patterns are pretty close fitting. I think if through the hip they were a little bit um, looser, I could get behind them. I don't hate them, but I also don't love them. I think that there are going to be some people out there who are going to make some really great versions of this, but might not be for me. I don't know. A wove, uh, I'm sorry, a knit pant that's that tight. I don't know, but I do think the top is cute. And I bet they're really freaking comfortable. <laughs> I bet they this whole outfit is totally like hidden pajamas status. All right. Now we've got a coat and pants. Cute styling here for sure. Love the fabric. Um, see just how tight everything is. I just, well, A, I don't have the time to fit something like that. More power to her for getting that to fit her curvaceous body. Um, but I have not had that much luck with pants fitting. Um, but yeah, really cute design here. Um, so we've got our slim fit pants, uh, like I guess that's like ankle length trench coat. I mean, that is a long coat. Then we've got your like, I guess, knee length slash maybe mid thigh length coat. And then there are our backs. Yeah, so it comes like mid thigh, that other shortened version. I don't typically wear workwear um, anymore. I'm not really in the office that much. And when I am, it's a very kind of business casual, like I can wear my sundresses and be probably one of the dressier people in the office. Um, if there's kind of like a hipstery vibe, I guess. There's a lot of like jeans and stuff like that. So I don't, this doesn't really fit into my lifestyle, but I do think it's really cute. And if you have places to wear 
an outfit like this, go for it. I will say though, I do think that it is like sexy for date night to make pants like this in uh, like a solid black or like even a fun pop of color and wear a dress shirt. Like this look here, I think would be super sexy for date night. It doesn't have to be for the office. Um, so, I mean, everyone can use a button on button down shirt for sure. Um, so, you know, the pants could make for a really cute, uh, outfit for things outside the office too. Okay. We have our threads pattern. I can't honestly say I recall Something is definitely going on with my internet here. Hold on, let me switch over to another network and see if that helps. Um, okay, so we've got our threads pattern. I can't say that, is this a new like collab or new partnership? Featured article on tips for setting zippers and knits in this, for this pattern in threads number 199. Uh, is this new to y'all too? Have y'all seen this before? Maybe I just haven't noticed. I've only been doing like the first impressions where I'm like paying attention to every detail for, I think I've only done the summer and early fall. So maybe they only do it infrequently, but either way. Okay. So we have a turtleneck and pants and this cute little wrap cardigan. Here we are again with this, um, you know, uh, what is it, a bishop sleeve, I think it's called. But here are the pants, elasticized waist, kind of bell bottomy. I think B is just a cropped version. Oh, and a little skirt. And then we've got a drop shoulder, um, turtleneck, very loose fitting with uh, side slits. The cardigan's cute. It all looks very comfortable. This looks familiar to me. Does StyleMaker Fabrics sell this? Michelle, if you're watching, let me know. I feel like I've seen that on one of her um, swatch videos that we've done together. Anyways, the whole outfit is sweater knit. So, I mean, how bad could it be? Um, it's got to be super comfortable. Yeah, Ponty, double knit, lightweight, scuba. Yeah, this one's cute. How it's like a monochromatic, like it looks like a suit, but it's like sweatshirt. I don't know. <laughs> Another hidden pajama situation going on. Okay. Now we've got a vintage suit, which I'm going to skip over. We've got a Mrs. Wrap skirt. Let's check this out. Okay. So we've got like a pleat detail with buckles giving me you know, 90s schoolgirl vibes. Um, it looks like we have a longer version. Then we have one that just has one buckle and this little asymmetrical hem. This one, I can't tell what's going on. And I can't tell what's going on with that one either. Um, here are the line drawings. So we've got long version, short version with the two buckles. Long version, short version with the one buckle, and then this one just ties and doesn't buckle. Is that the only difference on D? And then A is pleated, but C and D and E are circle skirts. Hmm. Kind of hard to tell what's going on here with everything, but. Here she is. Cute little outfit for fall, for sure. I like how they did the leather. That's nice. 
detail. Cute. I don't know what's happening with my screen. It seems to be fixing itself. Whoa. I think that's where we are. Okay. Um, yeah, this is all right. It's sweet. I don't know that I would spend the time to make it. It's just not my, again, not really my style. But I don't know. At the same time, I could see it um, not in a plaid. This circle is really small. Um, plaid seems so obvious to me, I guess, but maybe out of like a solid or maybe a denim would be really cute or corduroy, you know, I think, yeah, fabric choice. Okay. Here's an easy to sew knit skirt. Let's zoom in here with some interesting, I guess, to expose raw seams. Okay, here's a long version, a short version, and then one with patch pockets and one with a little asymmetrical ruffle. I think those are the options we have. Well, yeah, I bet it is easy to sew. It has like two seams in a waistband. Um, well, except for these. These are paneled. I don't know. I don't know about this. This is clearly a sweatshirt fleece and you sew the seams uh, wrong sides together and then press them open to the right side. That's really all it is. Um, you know, it might not even have side seams. Let's see. Oh no, it does. Yeah. And then you sew on an elasticized waistband. It is kind of cool and chic looking, I will say. It, at least this outfit, you know, how they did, how they pulled out the color of the wrong side of the fabric for her top. That's cool. Um, it makes it look a little bit more intentional and like a pulled together look, not like a sloppy inside out sweatshirt, I guess. Um, also no hem. These are all raw edges. So yeah. Yeah. That's, I would say that's an easy to sew knit skirt. <laughs> it could be cool. I just don't know if it's one of those that, you know, tomorrow when I'm thinking about things that I want to make, if that's going to come to mind, you know, not that memorable. Okay. Amazing fit pants. They are, here are the features, wide waistband, oh, invisible zipper on the side, so no fly front. I actually do like that. That does help with curvy girls. Slim fit through hips and thighs, um, how it comes in like this versus going straight down, which is again, okay. Um, modern leg shape with two lengths. It does come back out again and flare. I don't know if I like that a ton, but you can always change the shape of the leg from the hip down. That's very easy adjustment to make. Oh, and slash pockets. So I don't love diagonal slash pockets. I prefer the ones that are like, I don't know what shape would that be? Like half of a U. <laughs> um, but these aren't terrible especially if you can get it to fit right um, through the hip line. There shouldn't be any issues with the slash pockets, but it does uh, call out any issues that come up. You can even see on hers, it's a little bit not laying totally against her body there. What is with this top? Um, okay. Yeah. Oh, look at this. The little side slit. That's kind of cool. I mean, it's not difficult to do on any pair of pants that you have, um, but I do like the clean look of no fly front and the side zipper. Let's see. Are they showing that here? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was supposed to be invisible. 
This looks like a lap zipper to me. That's kind of sloppy looking. And her hand is covering half of it. Like, hello, that's the part we want to see. Hers looks better. But look at that fit. This is what I'm talking about, guys. This stuff is, I mean, so she has a very full, you know, hip. Her bum starts right here where her arm is, basically. And the seam is way over here. She needs like inches, two, three inches added to the back pattern piece. So I can already tell this is going to take some adjusting if I do buy this pattern. I don't know how they adjusted this to fit her. If they recut the front or what, I don't know. But that is crazy. Crazy. Yeah, we need to we need to update the back pattern pieces, guys, and like, you know, give some room for some booties. All right, super cute pleated skirt. Sweet. Okay, we've got, okay, so they're all pleated, lots of pleats. Um, we've got a longer version with a tie. I think this A is this, what she's wearing here. This is kind of a chic outfit, I think. Maybe she's a little young for it. It's not really resonating well, but I can see a modern woman, let's call it that, um, in this outfit wearing it to like a, you know, even like a winter event. I think the monochromatic um, tone on tone is very chic and updated. So I like that. Then we've got a shorter version. Then this is this, and it's got this little detail at the waistband. We've seen it before. Colette has a skirt pattern similar to this. And I think D is just a shorter version of C. But I've talked before how fun it would be to just go back and do like a very basic pattern, but do one really, really, really well. Um, if you guys follow Emily Hallman on Instagram, I feel like that is what she has mastered. Basics, basic patterns, nothing complicated with tons of frill or anything like that, but just executed beautifully. Um, and this skirt could be a great example of that. You could dress it up even more by doing black on black, um, like a shiny um, uh, fabric here, and then a more textured or um, not shiny, <laughs> what does that word mean, um, fabric here. Yeah, super chic. And then here's our more casual version, also very sweet. Great little pattern. I'm sure we all have a pleated skirt in our arsenal by now, though. So if you're new, though, and you don't have one, this I think this would be a good one. Okay. Mrs. Cardigan. Okay. I love the length. Like, obsessed with the length. Obsessed with the cuffed a sleeve and this little folded over collar. This is really great. This whole look with the skinny jean and the like boot or pump or heel or whatever, and then a turtleneck with a um, statement necklace is exactly how I want to dress this fall. <laughs> you know, it's like very comfortable, but also just really pulled together. I love the color of this one, this rust color. Um, but obviously, it would be great in tons of colors. Yeah, this is a this is interesting. Okay, so we've got our little rounded collar here, or folded over collar. We've also got a hip length version. Um, we've and then we've got this waterfall neckline. Same length variations there. This one does come up on the hem, which is nice. That's a little bit more uh, feminine and figure flattering, I think. And then here are our two backs. Oh, we also have different sleeves. So again, this sleeve with the little um, vent or the little slit detail on the inside, they're doing that a lot now. Just an extra little detail. 
doesn't she look great? And these sweater knits, guys, you really can find these lots of places now. This is obviously faced with self fabric, but you could do a contrast and have a contrasting collar. They don't show that, but um, you could totally do that. Yeah, it looks really good. Very comfortable. Easy, but pulled together and chic. I love it. Okay, moving on. Um, lined short jackets. I love short jackets. We're not going to get any pictures of a human being, which I don't love, but the drawings are cute. Okay, so what do we have here? A has a little uh, rounded collar, uh, toggles, drop shoulder. Uh, C has the same, but no toggles. B is the same and quilted. D has a mandarin collar. And maybe snaps, I don't know, hard to tell. And then E has a front ruffle, my favorite. I kind of like the front ruffle with the little collar here, not the mandarin collar. What's wrong with that? I'm sure you can swap out lots of the different elements. Okay, let's see our line drawings. Oh, C is meant to be in a fur. Interesting. Okay, here they are. I, I truly love a little cropped jacket. Again, super chic. You throw them on with jeans and a tank top or jeans and a t-shirt and instantly look like a thousand times more pulled together, <laughs> which is great. I mean, you can trick people into thinking you spent a little bit more time getting ready than you actually did. Um, but yeah, those are adorable. Let's see our more of our drawings. It might be fun to do a fur one. I've never really sewn with fur before, not in garments. I've made like, like, um... I guess it was Christmas stockings and the top was fur. But he's fun to do a fur jacket. I've got a ton of melton wool that I need to use up. And I don't think I'm going to use it for like a trench coat. So these could be good options for that. They are fully lined, um, which is nice. Look how cute that is. I love that one. You know, me and a ruffle. Oh, match made in heaven. Um, they are recommending fleece. Minky, hello. <laughs> That'd be like the most comfortable um, jacket ever. Sherpa fleece. We've got, oh, they're suggesting pre-quilted fabrics, which I have seen a lot of, even like in a Joanne, you can find these pre-quilted fabrics. Um, and then you've got faux fur and then brocade, corduroy, damask, velvet. Oh, velvet. And then lightweight wool types. And then you've also got denim and leather. So, I mean, it really does cover the gamut of your winter weight fabrics. Um, what's going on with her pants? Um, so, yeah, I think this is a really great little pattern to have in your stash. I love this one. Okay, now we've got a knit cardigan. Let's see what's going on here. So, it's hooded. And then just wraps and ties with cord, <laughs> I think. Um, it does look like it has, uh, is that a, that's not a pocket. I don't think it's a, is it? It might be a pocket. I can't tell. I'll have to look at the line drawings. And then this like scooped hem, which again is very flattering. See how it creates this line that kind of draws your eye up a little bit rather than it coming all and all down and just covering all your body. This kind of gives you um, a peek at you know, what's underneath all this volume. Um, yeah, look, C does have a pocket. This is kind of cool. I don't know about this cord though. I can't say that I'm loving that. I might swap that out for like an actual self tie, but I don't know, the cord could be cool. So, okay, we've got a hooded one with the this kind of pocket. And then we've got a non hooded one with and I can't tell if that's a pocket or just the drape of the fabric that they're trying to illustrate there. And then C is a shorter sleeve 
version of A, also without the hood. And then D is C without the pockets. So I'm thinking B and D don't have pockets. Yeah. Okay, let's see. It's also very oversized. I would probably size down just to make this a little bit more slim. I mean, I get that you're pulling it in at the waist and you've got this to kind of, you know, help it be a little more flattering too, but this is a lot right here, you know? Yeah, it's just a little, a little too much through here for me. I'd rather that be a little bit slimmer. Here it is open. Open, you can see, I guess, okay, so when you don't have it belted, you really do get this kind of shaping from the volume that is in this dolman sleeve. But when you belt it, then all of that has to go somewhere. And so the only place for it to go is like up and over. So I don't know, I'm kind of on the fence. Are you going to belt it? Maybe make it slimmer through the arm and bust. If you're not going to belt it, then this is nice. So those are my thoughts on that one. Whoa, okay. Poncho and topper. I kind of thought we were past ponchos, but maybe not. Look how cool this is. So it's a turtleneck, dolman sleeve. And then it kind of wraps around your neck and buttons here. B might be, or this might not open. This might be sewn shut and just buttons for detail. And then you've got this very large poncho. Very, very large poncho. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Well, it's not going to give us a ton of information here. I am venturing to guess that this does not open. This is just a top and you pull your, like, you know, you get into it like a shirt. Um, longer tunic version and then a shorter top version. Same sleeves on both. Same neckline on both. And then we have C. which is the poncho, um, and you can see that, well, C and D both are really just one gigantic rectangle, and then you sew a line, like, through this area here. Your arm goes through here, and then this is the poncho part. So it's certainly not complicated. I just don't know if I think that that's cute. I mean, it's like wearing a blanket, like wrapping a blanket around you, and cutting a couple holes in it for your head and your arms. You can see here how it's just tacked together right there. So yeah, I don't know. Not my style. But I also don't need like really overwhelming heavy sweaters like this. Yeah, probably just not my style. But this is cool. I do like the top. Okay, now we've got a fun slouchy sweater. It is a knit mini dress, tunic, or top. Love her messy bun. Okay, oh, and ripped jeans. So, oh, look, the little thumb holes are uh, part of the pattern. That's kind of cool. I love a sleeve that goes, like, way past your wrist. Ultimate comfy cozy. And in this neutral color, it's it can be kind of chic. Okay, um, I can't make heads or tails of the differences here. Uh, don't know the difference there. This one has some tie detail here, maybe a different kind kind of sleeve, and then maybe shorter in the front, longer in the back. Ooh, and then this one ties at the sides and it's cropped. I like that one. Let's see some line drawings. So, oh, it's just shorter. Okay, so A is the, the dress version, I guess. B must be the tunic length. C is B without the 
turtleneck. And then I think this is one of those where the tie like runs up through here and then back down and then you tie a little bow. Just interesting sleeve detail. And then it looks like, yeah, so D is cropped in the front and longer in the back, which is cute. And then you've got this other sleeve detail. Obviously you can mix and match all these sleeves, right? You don't need to just keep it with this one, but um, this detail where it's like the long sleeve and then you do a little tie at the wrist is really trendy. Um, I've seen that a lot in ready to wear. And then look how cute this one is. This is my favorite one. So you've got a little cuffed sleeve and it's cropped and then you install grommets and tie up the side. That one's really cute. Really cute. Let's see her. Nice. Look how big it is. It's still really long for her. Probably too long for her. Um, even though it is supposed to be oversized and slouchy. Yeah, very comfy. Very cute. Great styling. Great fabric choice. Okay. Uh, a blouse. Okay. Oh. Well. <laughs> this is that blouse I was commenting on earlier with these pants. Remember the pants with the, like, really little back piece? Um, and I was like, what is with that top? Well, here it is. Okay, so we have got, it's just the sleeve, I think, and the neckline, you know, like, I'm not cool enough to pull that off. Um, okay, so now you've got one with like a shorter, like a mullet, <laughs> a mullet hem. Something going on here with the sleeve, I can't really tell. Then you've got this version, which actually is pretty wearable to me. This one might have an elasticized hem. Here, it definitely has a forward shoulder and some kind of collar. And then D is this. And I actually don't think this is terrible. I just don't like it in this sanded satin. I mean, it, okay, this would look great on someone who's not 16 years old. Um, on an actual, like, mature woman, I can see this. I can see myself seeing someone in this on the street and thinking, you know what? She looks really chic and pulled together. Um, not for me. I couldn't pull that off. I'm just not elegant enough, I guess is the best word, but certainly you don't have to use this, you know, sanded satin. Um, some other fabrics are chalet, charmeuse, crepe de chine, double georgette, and silky types. So, you know, if they're not, you know, shiny, I think it makes it a little bit more, uh, well, less elegant. It makes it a little less elegant is what I'm looking for. But I do think that it's cool um, and would look good in, like, it would look good on more people in a not shiny fabric. Yeah. I wonder, oh, here's how the wrap works. It's a little messy, you know, like this doesn't look great. So, yeah, I don't have anything redeeming to say about this version. <laughs> it's just not for me. The Victorian style, I, I just don't, it, I don't dig it. Okay, there's another vintage one. Here is a new dress, a wrap dress. Okay. I know I gave them a lot of flack for the velvet last time, but this one actually looks really great in velvet. Maybe it's like a more expensive velvet than they were featuring before, or they just photographed it better. Either way, this is cute. I like this. I like this version a lot um, in kind of like the shirting type fabric. But honestly, all of these look good. I think that this one might even be knit. So you can swap them out. I don't know. Let's see what. Um, chambray, cotton, crepe, jersey, lightweight denim, which is kind of like chambray, linen, 
micro suede, ponty, which is a knit, silky types, and stretch velvet. So yeah, they are telling you that you can use, like you can just swap out knit for woven, which is kind of nice. Oh, look at it. We've got some pretty seam details here. That is excellent. 5,000 thumbs up for that. All the thumbs in the world. Um, this one has a cute little gathered sleeve. I'm wondering though if it's a, I, let's see if we can see a back view. Where's the back drawing? Yeah, so it's not a true wrap in that, you know, it wraps through this side and around the back and ties because we would be able to see the tie on the back here. So likely this comes down here and buttons or ties or something happens here. And then this comes around and, um, and ties here. So that's not super ideal. Uh, those typically don't fit me well, but I have to say, I don't know that I've sewn one with so many seams. So I'm wondering if these princess seams would help it shape the way that it's supposed to and lay the way that it's supposed to. We also have these amazing back dart situation going on here. Y'all know I love any shaping around the waist um, is going to be A-OK -okay in my book. This is, to me, a very well-drafted, or at least well-designed pattern. I, don't, I can't speak to the drafting because I haven't made it yet. But um, And then you have this buckle option instead of doing a tie, which is kind of modern and urban and, you know, kind of just a little bit more edgy, which I think is cool. I do love a bow though, don't get me wrong. I'm not straying away from my bows. But I mean, see how high it comes up on her neck? I mean, it's not super high like up here, but it's also not like showing anything, um, which is cute. Yeah, she's just getting all this great shaping, which is preventing any gaping here, which is, which is what you want. So I think this is a good faux wrap dress. I'm loving this a little less, but eh, I don't know. I do like it. I do like it. It looks too like you have a, a slimmer skirt and a more flared skirt, uh, which is nice. This is just giving me a little bit 80s shoulder pad vibes. You know what I mean? Like it's just making it look her look a little wider in the shoulder. And I feel like I have wide shoulders already, so I don't typically like to draw attention there. But here's the knit version. Oh, again with that sleeve detail. I didn't notice that in the drawing, but um, and a longer midi length. It's cute. I'm coming a little low here, maybe because the weight of the jersey is so heavy, but. Still, the shaping around the neck, which is usually where I have a problem where it starts gaping, um, I think is is taken care of by all these seams. So I I give this one a thumbs up. I do like that. If you're looking for a wrap dress, I would recommend this one. Without having ever having sewn it, I recommend it based on the line drawings and the, the model look. And can we just say that they made more than one version? Thank you. <laughs> I will give credit when credit is deserved. I will. Okay, this is a, what do they even call this? A Mrs. Women's Amazing Fit Dress. Okay, well, um, <laughs> elbow length sleeves with pleat detail adding fullness for fit. Okay, fair. Shaped ampere seam, which means it's like curved. Um, attaches to pleated bodice with split neckline. Okay. Side pleating, aka ruching, adds detail and figure flattering shaping, which it does. Um, I just hate this sleeve. I hate the pleated sleeve. But they do have non pleated sleeve options. Um, oh, and this one, which is cool, this is very. I don't know, trendy, fashion-y, um, where you do the ruching on the inner sleeve too. It actually creates a really great line on the wrist. Um, it's very flattering. 
And of course you have, like with all Amazing Fit, you have your slim, average, and curvy. Which makes me think back to those pants again and how that was an Amazing Fit pattern. And that curvy drafting was unlike anything I've ever seen. <laughs> Not curvy enough. Um, there just wasn't enough fabric to go around her curvy bum. But, <coughs> excuse me, let's look at some line drawings. Here we go. I do like this. I do like this a lot. Um, oh my gosh, see? Do you see? This is exactly what I've been trying to tell you guys. Okay, so here we are with our back fisheye darts. And look how the curvy one has an extra back fisheye dart. I'm not crazy. I'm not making this stuff up. Those darts really do make a difference. Oh my gosh, I feel so vindicated. Um, so in your slim and average patterns, you just get one, but on your curvy, you get two. Thank you. Amen. Yes. I'm so happy about that. That makes me want to buy the pattern just to support that decision, <laughs> singular decision. Okay, here we are with our curvy model. So this is the pleating for fullness that they were talking about um, and the ruching detail, which hides a lot of, you know, midriff issues that people might have. Um, here's our slim fit, but they gave her this crazy sleeve. Um, we're not going to get any back views, which is unfortunate because I did want to show you guys um, the back fish I dart sewn up. But either way. So there we go. I actually think it looks better on this girl than it does this girl. So I'm like her on top. And then once you get to about this line here, I'm like her. This is me on the, on the bottom. Um, I don't typically wear close fitting skirts like this, um, but this might be something I could get behind. I guess they're recommending Ponty double knit. Yeah. Spandex blends, stretch velvet. I think this one is like a lightweight dress ponty, dress weight ponty. Well, I'm bummed you can't see it in the photos, but this just makes me so happy. So happy. Okay. Now what? Ooh, Cynthia Rowley, one of my favorites. I usually always love her dresses. We've got kind of literal interpretation of cloudy rain flower applique. That's a little much for me, but if you can imagine it without any of that, that would be B. And then C, we've got a cute little top where they just put the appliques up here, um, which I think is kind of sweet. Here are our line drawings. I'm guessing they give you the pattern pieces to make all of these, right? Notions don't include patches. So I imagine you learn how to make these things, which that could be really cool. I have no idea how difficult that would be though, but certainly would be unique and different. I like that. I like being unique and different. It's one of the reasons why I sew. Um, Cynthia does include back fish eye darts. Amen, girl. And here's the back. Although, can y'all even see them? I can't even see them, but they're supposedly they're there. I like this sleeve too. So there you have it. I'm bummed you can't see those in the black. Is it my brightness? They're not there, right? Am I losing my mind? There's no dart back there. I wonder if they added them in later. Huh. I mean, that is supposed to be a fisheye dart drawn in. That's not just like trying to show the um, drape of the fabric. It's like a line. Like a distinct line. I don't know. Hmm. Either way. Add them if they're not there. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, now we've got another vintage dress, which actually does look pretty cute. I love the collar, obviously. Yep. Oh, and then, yeah, they just, they just did the skirts. They did the seaming so well back then. Look at that. Awesome. We even got some pleats in the sleeves here. Yeah. I think really the only difference between modern clothes and vintage clothes are the um, ease in the bodice. You know, that's just very full. But it is cute. Okay, here's another vintage coat and dress. Skim through this one. Oh, look at that. Let's see more of that. Is that a bow? Oh, it's bows. A bow there and a bow there. Oh, adorable. Uh, is that another one? Lots of bows happening. Oh, bows all the way down. Oh, and bows on the back of the coat. Oh my gosh. Look, one, two, three, four. That is so cute. I don't know about bows that high up on your on your bust though. <laughs> but look, oh my gosh. Oh, I don't want to want to make this, but I do want to make it really badly. That's adorable. It gotta be pretty easy. Is it lined? Um, la la. I don't think so. Oh no, lining for the coat. Yeah, there it is. Darn. It's really cute though. That's adorable. Okay. That might be it. We've got some vintage accessories like pillbox hat and a clutch, I think. Um, and then some costumes. I guess it is the time for Halloween. Are you thinking about making your Halloween costume? Did any of y'all do that? I never was really into Halloween anyways. Oh, teddy bears and a little dragon. I wonder how many of these accessories will end up in Cricut. And then I think we have caught up to, yeah, these are all the early fall, late summer patterns. So there you have it. Those are our um, new simplicity patterns. And I got to say, guys, that we had a rough go there for a few months. But there are several in here that I do like and I would recommend. Um they really stepped it up with the pattern hacking ones. Mimi G came out with something to redeem herself from those dresses in the, <laughs> in the last release. Um, there's a lot of really cute patterns in here that I feel like are trendy without being like too over the top. I will definitely be adding this one to my stash. Probably also this sweater for the cropped grommeted version. Um, probably those three, the first pattern hacking one, this one, and this one I'll add to my list, but I do highly recommend this. And if I didn't have like a thousand wrap dresses already, I would probably be getting this one too. So yeah, a lot of really good options. I'm happy there. Let me know what you guys think. Um, let me know which patterns you really loved. And if you could reference not just the pattern number, but also some like identifying detail of the pattern. It's hard. I, of course, I don't have all these pattern numbers memorized. So when I'm reading the comments, it's easier for me to remember which one you're talking about if you reference some detail about the pattern versus just the pattern number. And then we can have a great chat about it. Anyways, I guess that'll do it for me today. I will see you all in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.